Welcome to the Waterfront Rescue Skills module of the American Lifeguard Association's Comprehensive Lifeguarding Program. This module has been designed to provide you with specialized knowledge and skills necessary for effectively safeguarding waterfront areas. Run and Swim Entry To safely enter the water in areas with a gradual slope and no significant depth, such as wave pools or natural shorelines, employ the Run and Swim technique. Begin by grasping the rescue tube along with any excess line and initiate a brisk run into the water while ensuring to lift your knees high to maintain balance and prevent falling. Once running is no longer possible, there are two options to consider. The first involves positioning the rescue tube across your chest and beneath your arms, leaning slightly forward. Alternatively, you may choose to drop the tube to the side and commence swimming allowing the rescue tube to trail behind you. It is crucial to avoid diving or plunging headfirst into the water. Walking Assist If the victim is able to walk, you can assist them in leaving the water by using the walking assist technique. Place one of the victim's arms around your neck and across your shoulder. Grasp the wrist of the arm that is across your shoulder. Wrap your free arm around the victim's back or waist to provide support. Hold the victim firmly and assist them in walking out of the water. Beach Drag If the person in need is unable to walk, the beach drag technique is a safe and easy way to get them out of the water. When you reach shallow water, stand behind the person and move your rescue tube aside so you don't trip on it. Hold them securely under their armpits, using your forearms to support their head, and walk backwards towards the shore. Drag them far enough until they are completely out of the water. Gently lower them to the ground and check their condition to provide appropriate care. The beach drag can also be done with two rescuers. Each lifeguard should hold the person under one armpit and support their head. Head Splint Face down in extremely shallow water. Approach the victim's head from the side. Grasp the victim's right arm with your right hand and the victim's left arm with your left hand, effectively trapping the victim's head between their arms. Initiate a controlled rolling motion, gradually turning the victim towards you. Step from the victim's side towards their head, facilitating the transition to a face-up position. As you step toward the victim's head, lower your arm on the side closest to you, allowing the victim's arms to pass over the top of your arm. Maintain consistent pressure against the victim's head as your hand rotates during this maneuver. If the victim appears unresponsive, promptly conduct a quick assessment of their breathing and monitor the victim's condition as you wait for assistance. Searching Shallow Water Areas Working at a waterfront facility presents a unique set of challenges, especially when it comes to poor water visibility caused by murky conditions and sun glare. In such circumstances, locating drowning victims who have submerged can be a daunting task. If you spot a submerged victim in an area with limited visibility, it is crucial to activate your facility's emergency action plan and swiftly swim to the last known location of the victim. In case you are unable to locate the victim promptly, it may become necessary for your safety team to organize a search operation. When organizing a search in shallow water where the bottom cannot be seen, designate a lifeguard or supervisor to oversee the search operation. Instruct the searchers to link arms or hold hands, forming a line in the water. Guide the entire line to move slowly and uniformly across the designated search area commencing from the location where the missing person was last seen. As the line progresses forward, instruct the searchers to sweep their feet across the bottom with each step, systematically covering the area. In the presence of a current, ensure that the searchers walk downstream, aligning themselves with the flow. Mask and Fins When conducting a deep water search, it is essential to know how to use masks and fins correctly. Using this equipment is not difficult. Let's learn the proper way to use them. Mask Choose a mask with soft, flexible material, non-tinted, tempered safety glass, and an easily adjustable head strap. Ensure the mask allows nose blocking or squeezing for pressure equalization. A proper fit is crucial to prevent water leakage. To check the mask's fit adequately, place the mask against your face without the strap. Inhale slightly through your nose to create a suction that holds the mask in place. Adjust the strap for comfort, placing it on the crown of your head. Avoid tight or loose fitting. Test the mask in water. 
If it leaks, adjust the strap position and tighten if necessary. Persistent leaks may indicate a need for a different sized mask. To prevent fogging, apply saliva or use commercial defoggers on the inside of the mask's faceplate and rinse it before wearing. Fins. Fins are a valuable tool for increasing speed and covering long distances with less effort. Achieving a good fit is crucial for optimal movement. To easily put on fins, wet your feet and the fins beforehand. Push your foot into the fin and slide the fins back or strap up over your heel. Ensure that the fins fit snugly on your feet. If they're too tight or too loose, it may be necessary to try a different size to achieve an optimal fit. Swimming underwater with masks and fins. To swim underwater with a mask and fins, employ a modified flutter kick technique. This involves a deeper and slower kicking action with slightly increased knee bend compared to the regular flutter kick. When swimming underwater, rely primarily on your legs for propulsion while keeping your arms relaxed at your sides. In murky water conditions, extend your arms forward to shield your head and enhance your ability to locate and feel for the victim. Entering the water with masks and fins. When wearing this equipment, it is recommended to use a slide-in entry or execute a stride jump if the height is less than three feet. Never attempt a head-first entry when wearing a mask and fins. Secure the mask in place by placing one hand over it, keeping your elbow close to your chest. Take a long stride forward over the water, but maintain an upright posture without leaning forward. The fins will regulate your descent as you enter the water. In cases of poor underwater visibility, extend your arms forward to safeguard your head. Feet first surface dive with fins and mask. To execute a feet first surface dive while wearing fins and a mask, position your body vertically in the water. Simultaneously press both hands down to your sides and kick forcefully to lift your body out of the water. Take a breath and allow your body to sink beneath the water's surface as you begin extending your arms outward with palms facing upward. Use your arms to push against the water, aiding your descent. Keep your legs straight, together and point your toes. Once you have reached a sufficient depth, Tuck your body and transition to a horizontal position. Extend your arms and legs and swim underwater using a steady and controlled technique. Head first surface dive with fins and mask. Generate momentum by performing a swimming stroke, propelling yourself forward in the water. Before initiating the dive, take a breath and sweep your arms backwards toward your thighs, turning your palms downward. Tuck your chin towards your chest and flex at the hips with a sharp movement, simultaneously extending your arms downward towards the bottom. Lift your legs upward, keeping them straight and together. The weight of your legs above the water surface will assist in your descent. Maintain a fully extended and streamlined body position, leaning towards a near vertical orientation. Then level out your body and continue swimming forward underwater. Searching deep water areas. When conducting a deep water line search, prepare by equipping all lifeguards with masks and fins. Form a straight line with lifeguards positioned at an arm's length from each other. Assign one lifeguard as the safety lookout stationed above the water level on a pier, raft, or watercraft. This lifeguard should be equipped with necessary rescue equipment to assist in case of any emergencies or if the missing person is found. Upon receiving the command from the lead lifeguard, all lifeguards perform the same type of surface dive, either feet first or head first, descending to the bottom. In murky water, searchers should sweep their hands back and forth in front of them, ensuring coverage of the entire area. Minimize disturbance of silt and dirt on the bottom to prevent further clouding of the water. Lifeguards should ascend to the surface as vertically as possible after each dive. The lead lifeguard takes responsibility for accounting all searchers, reforms the line at the position of the lifeguard farthest back, and backs up the line by one body length. Following the command, the team dives again. Repeat this procedure until the victim is found or the entire search area has been thoroughly searched. Lifeguards move the line in one direction until reaching the boundary of the search area, then make a 90-degree turn to form a new line and repeat the sequence as needed. If the missing person is not found, expand the search to nearby areas while considering the influence of currents that may have affected the victim's movement. Lifeguards must persist in the search until the person is found, emergency personnel take over, or the search is officially called off by authorized officials. In the event a lifeguard locates the victim, the lifeguard should carefully bring the victim to the surface by grasping them under the armpit. 
approaching the victim on a rescue board. Rescue boards are commonly used in waterfront settings and are particularly helpful when there is a considerable distance between you and a victim. These boards can accommodate both you and one or more victims. Using a rescue board effectively requires practice in various water conditions. Once you become skilled at it, the rescue board becomes an invaluable tool. To launch a rescue board, firmly grasp it on both sides near the middle and enter the water. Once the water reaches knee deep, place the rescue board on the water's surface and push it forward. Position yourself just behind the middle of the board and lie down in a prone position. Paddle towards the victim by using either a front crawl or butterfly arm stroke, keeping the front of the board facing the victim. If you need to kneel to get a better view of the victim, paddle a few strokes before changing your position on the board. Continue paddling with your head up, keeping the victim in your sight until you reach them. With practice, you will become proficient at launching the rescue board and transitioning directly into the kneeling position. Rescuing a distressed swimmer or active victim. When using a rescue board for a rescue, ensure that the rescue board is positioned between you and the victim at all times. Approach the victim from the side, positioning the rescue board next to the victim. Grasp the victim's wrist and slide off the rescue board from the opposite side. Try to calm the victim as you reach across the board and hold on. Assist the victim in extending their arms across the rescue board. Stabilize the rescue board and help the victim onto it. Instruct and help the victim to lie on their stomach facing the front of the board. Carefully climb onto the board from the back, positioning your chest between the victim's legs. Be cautious not to tip the rescue board and keep your legs in the water for stability and paddle back to shore. Rescuing a passive victim. If the victim is unresponsive or unable to hold onto or climb onto the rescue board, approach the victim from the side. Grasp the victim's hand or wrist and slide off the board on the opposite side, flipping the rescue board towards you. Keep the victim's arm across the board with their chest and armpits against the far edge. Use your other hand to hold the far edge of the rescue board. Kneel on the edge of the rescue board, using your body weight to flip the board back towards you. As the rescue board comes down, support the victim's head. Position the victim lengthwise in the middle of the rescue board with their head facing the front. Kick to turn the board towards shore. Carefully climb onto the board from the back, placing your chest between the victim's legs. Ensure the rescue board remains stable by keeping your legs in the water. Paddle the rescue board towards shore.